Let's travel back to the year 1963. The Beatles released their first album. Martin Luther King delivered his famous I Have a Dream speech. I have a dream. On the home front, an exciting new show called Doctor Who took the UK by storm. And in Dartford, the first road tunnel east of London opened and revolutionised travel across the region. Linking Kent and Essex and the South East to the Midlands and the North like never before. The Dartford Purfleet Tunnel. The Dartford Tunnel, a roadway connecting Kent and Essex. From end to end, the tunnel is 1,600 yards long. With the approach roads, the total length is almost four miles. One way and another, we're beginning to get the road system Britain needs. My connection to the Dartford Crossing is that my grandfather was General Foreman on the second Dartford Tunnel. My father was a, what they call a pony boy, which is a, what we call a backup miner nowadays. When I drive through the both Dartford Tunnels, I feel a sense of pride that my family were part of it. In November 1963, the first tunnel of the Dartford Crossing finally opened after work started back in the 1930s, but was paused during World War II. The M25 hadn't existed. If you wanted to get across to Thurrock in those days, you'd have had to go down to the Woolwich Ferry. The area surrounding Dartford was a lot of farmland, council estates that were sprung up just after the Second World War. It was an incredible feat of engineering for the time, and the times were very different indeed. Fashion was different, inspired by Dartford's own Rolling Stones. Cars were different. British-made Austins, Vauxhall Victors and Ford Cortinas, which were built just up the river in Dagenham, were a fraction of the size, weight and power of today's vehicles. And they were becoming more abundant than ever before. In 1963, the Dartford Tunnel was expected to carry two million vehicles a year. But within seven years, social and economic growth meant that number had already reached eight million. As times changed, the network required further investment and a second tunnel was opened in 1980. My name's Andy Sintel and I'm a long-time career tunneler. In March 1974, I started working on the Dartford Tunnel. I'm old enough, unfortunately, to remember the opening of the original tunnel, a single Dartford Tunnel with two-way traffic in it and the queues of traffic waiting to get through. Of course, when we opened the second one, that was all cleared. A few years later, of course, they turned it into the M25, so it all got clogged up again until the bridge was opened. I became involved with the second dark foot tunnel in 1973. They appointed me the medical officer. I was there to do uh, medical examinations fundamentally and take great care of the men, of the men working in compressed air, 10 metres wide, dug by hand, I don't think there's ever going to be another tunnel quite like Dartford. When I look back at what we did then, I think, you know, it's a completely different world. The continued growth in the region and demand of road use soon required the Dartford crossing to evolve again. And in 1991, the Queen Elizabeth II bridge was built as the longest cable-stayed span bridge in Europe. I was in London for 15 years and then came out and started my own business and then contacted by Dartford River Crossing to come in and help photograph, record the building of the bridges. When the Queen opened the bridge, she was very interested in what was happening. Her knowledge was incredible. It's so valuable to the community or the country. The Dartford Crossing's unique position as the only road across the river east of London makes it one of the UK's most vital strategic routes, connecting people to family, friends, jobs and customers. Almost half the traffic that use it is freight, carrying goods, fresh food, medication and the everyday items we all rely on to supermarket shelves and doorsteps in every corner of the country. Today, the crossing carries over 50 million vehicles each year, far more than it was designed for. It has a dedicated team to keep traffic flowing around the clock. But as demand continues to grow, the network needs to grow to keep the region prospering as it has done for over half a century. A new Lower Thames crossing is being planned to almost double road capacity over the river east of London. It will make journeys at Dartford quicker, safer and more reliable by redirecting over 13 million vehicles a year. 
The new crossing will give a boost to the UK economy, as it will allow more goods to be carried across the region and beyond by vehicles of the future. The Dartford crossing was designed in a different era, for different vehicles and a different way of life. It is an incredible part of the UK's transport history and remains an indispensable part of today's transport network. It has transformed the region and combined with the Lower Thames crossing will continue to help the region thrive long into the future.